Sometimes I wonder if the Lord has forgot about this old road game and busting this rock. Oh, well, the picks and shovels are working in the cold and in the sun. And the dally is waiting to get to use his gun. Oh, well, run, boy, run, run, boy, run, for daddy's gonna get you with his old shotgun. Now, remember what I said. I'm walking out of here in about three minutes. Now, you stay put. Just like that. I owe this lousy state five years, and I'm cutting out. Man, old Dally's mean. He'll shoot. Sure, he'll shoot if he gets a chance. But I got about 20 seconds to make my play. And then, wham! Cully, I'd think about it for a while if I was you. I mean, five years will pass. Sure, it'll pass. If I behave myself, they may let me out of here in four. But four years in this ditch is a long, long time. Beat it. That thing smells. Cully, maybe you should wait. Look, kid, this is my play, and I'm gonna make it. 20 seconds goes awfully fast. How do you know he'll even look at his watch? Ever since we've been out here, that little sawmill over there toots a blast at 12 sharp. Old Dally reaches inside his pocket, pulls out his watch, and winds it. Now that action takes about 20 seconds. That's when I make my play. Man, I sure enjoyed knowing you. Don't take it so serious, kid. I'll make it. I sure hope so. Now, remember what I said. As soon as I bust out of here, I'm gonna grab that loot I got stashed. Now, you stay here and do your time and, and meet me in Mexico. Then we really live it up. And all I've got to do is look up your kinfolk in Antioch. Look up my nephew, Cephas. And you'll always know where I am. And Snake, if anything should happen and I don't make it, I want you to have that loot. About two minutes away, and I'm coming out. Coming out. If the time is right, I've got to make my break. And then it's run, boy, run, run, boy, run. A daddy's gonna get you with his old shotgun. Stand where you are, Snake, and lift them, or you'll be next.
Let's get the hell out of here. Run, boy, run. Run, boy, run. Our daddy's gonna get you with his old shotgun. Sometimes I wonder if the Lord has forgot about the old rope game and busting this rock. A picks and shovels are working in the cold and in the sun. Our daddy is waiting to get to use his gun. With his old shotgun We're men that's forgotten The world has passed us by And nobody cares If we live or die And I've got too long to try to wait If the time is right I've got to make my break And then it's run, boy, run Run, boy, run Our daddy's gonna get you With his old shotgun I said run, boy, run Run, boy, run Our daddy's gonna get you With his old shotgun And so this Cully guy gets his stupid head blown off just about the time we're ready to get him sprung. So where do you think the loot is, Vest? Probably in that hick town, but where? That's the problem. How much of the green stuff is there? 100,000 bucks and all in small bills. So how is it that this Cully guy hides the loot and not you? Well, I'll start from the beginning. There's a small paper mill that pays its employees in cash. Cully Burke comes to us with an idea. And so we buy it. And the next thing you know, we knock the joint over. Halloween masks and all and blow with a hundred thousand clams. So why does this Cully guy wind up with the loot? Cully's gonna bring the dough to Joe there. He's about 15 miles away in another car. Then he's gonna transfer the money and Joe is gonna bring it to the hideout. We'll split it there. So? So Cully must have stashed the loot because when he's picked up, all he's got is 37 cents. All right, where do we start? Cully has a cellmate, a small time hood by the name of Snake Richards. So when Cully gets his back caved in with a load of buckshot, the kid gets away along with the rest of the gang. You figure the kid knows something? <sighs> Could be. And sooner or later, he'll show up in that little tobacco town. If he does, he knows something. And then? That's where you come in. Couldn't the two of you handle it? Probably. But if the situation toughens up, we're gonna need some muscle. But there's enough loot to go around. You in? All the way. All the way.
Rusty, hunting's been real scarce today, and I'm getting kind of hungry. How about you? Why don't you run along and get our lunch? Rusty, a boy needs a buddy. Oh, you're my buddy, all right, but you're my hunting buddy. What I need is a human buddy. And there's Pa and Uncle Cephas, but they're too old. Then there's Rita and Nadine, but they're just girls, so they don't even count. And Tom's never around, except when he's with Nadine. So I just guess you'll have to be my buddy, until I can do better. What is it, Rusty? <laughs> you're two-legged. You better come out by the time I count three. And if you're four-legged, I'm still counting. One, two, Hi, partner. What are you doing on our land? Well, I was uh, out hunting with some friends of mine, and I've got lost. You got no business hunting here. It's all posted. Besides, where's your gun? Well, I left it down the road a piece. I've been out here since morning, and I ain't heard no shooting. You must be lying. OK, kid, I'll level with you. I am lying. I don't know how to tell you this, I just... I'm on the run from the law. But I didn't do nothing bad now, I just... I just got mixed up with the wrong bunch. Listen, kid, I heard what you said about, you know, needing a buddy. I could be your buddy. I need one bad. Real bad. How about it, kid? Well, what's your name? My friends call me Snake, Snake Richards. Well, what do they call you Snake for? Well, I guess, because I've been a little slippery, but I could be a good buddy to you. Well, I don't know. What do you think about it, Rusty? Well, Rusty likes you, so I guess you ain't all bad. That's what Pa says. Says there's a little bit of bad in all of us, but there's a whole lot of good, too. Well, if you're ready, we may as well get started for the house. Now, hold, hold on a minute. What's your Paul going to think about me coming to the house? Ah, Pa won't mind. He's a preacher. He's always taking in stray souls. Besides, tonight's prayer meeting night, and he'd be powerful glad to have you in church. <laughs> How about the barn tonight? And then maybe tomorrow. OK, if you say so. Hey. You got any of the clothes besides those you're wearing? Just these I've got on. I could get you some of my brother's clothes. Your brother's? Yeah, but he got killed in the war. I'm sorry. Hey, you know you look like him. You look a lot like him. Hey, you know what this is? Fight? Uh-huh. When other people do it, it's because they're mad. When we do it, it means buddy. Okay? You know, a buddy sign. Okay, buddy. Well, Rusty and me will be moving along, and I'll see you later on tonight and bring you something to eat. 
Barn's about two miles down the road. You wait here. Uh, I'll be there. Okay, buddy. Buddy. Come on, Rusty. <laughs> Preach, if you don't mind, I think I'll be heading home. See if I can't fill this thing up. <laughs> All right, Cephas. Get ready for some more work tomorrow. Good, good. You know, you kind of like this tobacco farming, don't you? It's a way to make a living. Sometimes. Sometimes, Cephas. What with the government meddling with the acreage allotment, the wet years, and the dry ones, plant bed disease, <laughs> insects, and trying to find outside help when you need it, I'd say it's kind of a sometime affair. Well, anyhow, this day is done tended to. Just about. Hi, it's Tom. And I bet he's come according. Oh, Pa, can I go out and meet him? I'm almost finished. Yeah, go ahead, Nadine. I'll see him later. I want to keep my mind on my feet tonight. Okay. Tom. Anytime, Tim. Better go inside and clean up. Pa's been asking about you. Hi, Tom. Howdy, Nadine. Wait a minute, honey. What? There's something I just got to tell you. You are as pretty as a newborn calf in the springtime. Oh, there you go comparing me to an animal rather than complimenting me for myself. Oh, honey, now, don't go getting your feathers all ruffled up. All I'm trying to do is say you're pretty. There ain't nothing much prettier than a newborn calf. I'm accepting you. <laughs> well, that's my opinion. Mine too, Tom. <laughs> What's the occasion for the siren? Well, it's fairly simple, Brother Bowden. Tim likes to hear the siren and I blow it for him. Then he helps me out in my court with Nadine. <laughs> Hi, you see us? What do you know? Hi, Tom. How's crime? Crime don't pay. <laughs> Brother Bolton, well, I was thinking maybe you might let Nadine ride into town with me. I got to go check in and I just bring her back for prayer meeting. That way you'd be guaranteed another soul for your congregation tonight. Could I, Pa? We'll be back in time for meeting and all. All right, Nadine. Be back before supper, though, you hear me? Thanks, Pa. <laughs> She's going to make you a good wife, Tom. You know, I'll tell you something. You'll never see a man the more willing than I am. Now all I got to do is convince Nadine. Ah, oh, Nadine's like a young fill that ain't been broke good. She'll be all right. Just give her time. Boy, women. You ought to know where Brother Vic's clothes are. Pa makes you take them out and check them. Well, why don't you answer? Oh, Timmy, leave Rita alone. I don't care if she stutters. She can't help it. Besides, what do you want with your dead brother's clothes? They're still too big for you. Women, I guarantee you when I grow up, I ain't never gonna get married. <laughs> hey, honey, what did I do with my coat? 
Pa's letting me go into town with Tom, and boy, is it cold outside. Do I look pretty? Boy, with your singing voice and my looks and figure, I could be the belle of this whole... Hey, wait a minute. I got something I want to show you. But don't you breathe a word of it to Pa, you hear? Okay? Now close your eyes. Now open up your eyes. See? Ain't it pretty? I got it out of one of those ads in a movie magazine. Boy, I'll bet Tom's eyes would just pop out if he was to see me in this. would say if he was to see me. You don't have to wonder no more. Bring it here and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. But pa? Bring it here. Right. To be decent, ladies. I'm ashamed of you. Nadine, come here. Burn it. Oh, Pop, please. Burn it. Get yourself out there to that boy. And if I ever hear of you buying junk like this again, I'll take you out of the smokehouse and tan you a little behind. Forgive me, Lord, for losing my temper. Now get! What'd you do, Pa? What'd you burn? Mine, boy, it's none of your business. Do your chores? Well, I was fixing to. See that you do. Yes, sir. You two have a good time now. We will, Cephas. And you better be back in time for prayer meeting. Let's hurry before Pa changes his mind. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll be right by. She's not bad looking for a farm broad. They grow them just as pretty in the country as they do in the city. We're not here to look for broads. That's right. We're bird hunters, looking for a special kind of bird. Jailbird. We've been here for three days, Vest. Think that snake's gonna show? One thing draws a guy like him. The smell of money. I don't get it. Look at that sign. Gentlemen, we're all going to a tobacco festival. There's a church in the valley by the wildwood. No lovelier spot in the dale. No place is so dear. 
don't suppose the Lord will mind if I use this tobacco festival ticket to mark a passage in his good book. The fact is, the festival is just right here on us. Just about on us. And I'm happy to mention it from the pulpit. Now, if you haven't bought your ticket yet, see Cephas. Get your ticket from Cephas. The church can sure use the money. Let me read you what it says in the good book. It's in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 16, verse 17. It says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he hath given thee. You know, tobacco farming is a little like folks. They're sometimes good, sometimes not so good, sometimes pretty bad. Now, we're going to be favored right now by Miss Martha. A song from Miss Martha Carson. Brother Bolton, I brought a couple of friends along with me, Smiley and Kitty Wilson. Well, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To Canaan land. Canaan land. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To Canaan land. Canaan land. I'm on my way. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yes, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Canaan land. Canaan land. I'm on my way. And now we'll have the treasurer's report. Cephas. Brother Bolton, folks, this past week we took in three nice pullets, two bushels of hickory nuts, some peaches, uh, canned peaches, <laughs> and one nice fat choke. Could you boil that down to hard cash, Cephas? About $13.20. What do we owe? Right now, nothing, but... Uh, after they come put in that new fan for the summer, we're going to be about $30 in the hole. Well, thank you, Cephas. The Lord will provide. Brother Bolton. Yes, sir. I was wondering if you'd mind if I kind of helped the Lord out a bit and passed around the collection basket. Oh. Oh, I don't think the Lord will mind too much, Cephas. Oh, why you at it? See if you can get rid of a couple of more tickets to the tobacco festival. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> and while uh, Brother Cephas is doing his duty, let's sing just one short verse of Love Lifted Me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Thank you for the provisions that you have so generously provided. Thank you for the givers, because they work hard for the keep. And Lord, about the fan. Yes, Lord, about the fan. We thank you for providing us with a fan. It'll sure help to quieten the congregation during the hot months. Our little church gets pretty hot during the summertime. We thank you for all these things, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, at this time, usually as we close, we ask if someone would like to introduce a new soul, maybe join the church, Make a statement. Uh, I, I have Pa. I, I, I mean, Reverend. You have Tim? Yes, sir. Say what you got to say, boy. Well, first, Pa, you always said it was better to give than to receive. You said that, didn't you, Pa? Of course I did. Everybody knows that, Tim. Well, Pa, I, I gave somebody some old clothes. The Lord will bless you, son. And I bless you. Well, I'm glad of that, because I gave away my dead brother's clothes. You did what? I gave them to someone who needed them bad, to keep the cold out. And where is this person that needed Vic's clothes so bad? He, he's standing outside. Well, go outside. Invite him in. Have your friend come to the altar. What is his son's name, thou canst tell? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Every word of Almighty God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul.
Pa, Rita kind of likes him, don't she? <laughs> Suppose I've done the right thing by giving Snake Brother Vic's clothes? Well, he needed them, son. Besides, you know what the good book says. Never hesitate to entertain a stranger. For many having done so, have entertained an angel unaware. That'll do for now, Snake. How about helping me out in the barn? Come in, son. What uh, did you want me to do, Brother Bolton? Oh, the job will wait. Sit down and make yourself at home. Tim, you run up the house for a minute, son. But, Pa. I wanted to listen. You run up the house like I said. Brother Bolton, if you want to talk, there ain't nothing I wouldn't say to you that I wouldn't say in front of Tim. Well, all right. All right. Close the door, son. Keep out the chill. OK, Brother Bolton. Get it off your chest. Oh, just wanted to say a few words. You know, a little while ago, I saw you cutting wood for the girls. Yesterday, went hunting here with Tim. What I'm trying to say is, you do credit to my son's clothes. You're welcome around here. See, I told you you had nothing to worry about. Were you worried? He thought you were going to make him leave, Pa. Ah, oh, why would I do that? Brother Bolton? I'm on the run from the law. Oh, I know that, son. I didn't tell him. Honest. How did you know? Because it's written all over your face. Every crooked turn, every running mile. Now you're standing at the crossroads. Nobody knows which road you'll take. Not even you. Probably up some alley. That's what my pa always told me. Your pa? All right, Tim. Let Snake talk. Ma died when I was just a baby. And pa... He beat me a lot when he was drunk, which was most of the time. I've seen him so drunk, he couldn't bend down to tie his own shoes. You know what he used to tell me, preacher? He used to say I was going to die in some alley with my shoes on. But let me tell you something. When I cash in my chips, there's going to be money all around me, and it won't be in no alley either. Well, now, the way I see it, son, you don't ever have to die in no alley. Right, Tim? Right, Pa. All you have to do is stay here in the country. Because there ain't an alley in a hundred mile of here. Brother Bolton, you're all right. Now, what do you say we go up the house? About time to eat. That boy eats all the time. All the time. <laughs> Nadine, bring the boys some hot coffee, honey. 
Have some more coffee, Tom? No, thanks, Nadine. I'm full up to here. Will you have some more coffee, Snake? Yes, ma'am, I believe we will. Who are you taking to the tobacco festival, Snake? I hadn't thought much about it. Well, why don't you think about it? I know some girl who would be more than pleased to go with you. I'll have some coffee, Nadine. Rita, bring Snake another piece of cake. If you got any ideas, let me know, you hear? Where you come from, Snake? Texas. I mean, where do you come from before you got here? Oh, places. Like what places? I don't believe that's any of your business. Maybe it wasn't my business. But as of right now, I'm making it my business. Look, mister, if you're looking for trouble, you've already found it. Trouble's what I get paid for. <sighs> I didn't want it this way. You boys can talk some other time. Hey, Tom, how about doing that number I like so well? Let's go in the parlor and get to fit. <laughs> Steve. Hold out there. What kept you, Seifers? Well, I had to go down to church and help put in a new fan. Oh, I remember the fan, yeah. Snake sing for you? Snake sings? He sings and plays the guitar all the time. <laughs> but he didn't want me to tell anybody. Well, hand him the guitar there, Seifers. Maybe it'd be kind enough to sing a song for us, Snake. Preach, uh... I don't sing the exact type of gospel songs that you folks sing. <laughs> I'm sure we'll enjoy it, son. Well, I 
I come here to tell you folks I'm ragged, but I'm right. A tramp and a rounder, I stay out late at night. A porterhouse steak three times a day for my board. That's more than any loafer in this big town can afford. Well, a big electric fan to keep me cool while I sleep. A little baby boy to play around at his feet. I'm a rounder, a gambler, I'll eat every life. Well, I tell you folks I'm ragged, but I'm right. Build a little love nest right here in this old town. I'll raise a family, a one that I'm proud of. I know that I'll be happy, cause they're the one I love. Well, a big electric fan to keep me cool while I sleep. A little baby boy to play around at his feet. I'm a rambler, a gambler, and I lead every life. Well, I tell you folks I'm ragged, but I'm right. Well, folks, it's been a fine evening. But we all got work to do come tomorrow morning, and it's getting late. Oh, Snake. You still haven't told me who you're taking to the festival. Well, I would uh, be mighty proud to take Miss Rita if she would let me. Rita? Yes, ma'am, if uh, she'd let me. I believe Rita'd be proud to go with you, boy. Rita? Y yes, sir. Well, now that's settled, I guess it's time we're getting on home. You ready, Snake? I was hoping you could stay a little longer, Cephas. I'd like to take up some church matters with you. Well, I don't mind staying a little longer. I don't imagine it'd bother Snake. Well, Tom and me would be glad to drive Snake home. Besides, he'll need another quilt for his bed. brought you a blanket. Thanks a lot. It might keep you warm on these cold nights. If you play with fire, you're liable to get burned. Hmm. But I might just like to get burned. I don't mean by me. I mean by your boyfriend outside. Oh, Tom, don't mind. Besides, this is Cephas's cabin. But Cephas ain't here. have a way of going on. The way I look at it, trouble's outside waiting. You mean Tom? He's used to waiting. Would you two like to be alone? Where's three a crowd? 
You've got to admit, we asked for it. Tom, I didn't want to kiss him. He, he forced me to. You do believe me, don't you? Yeah, I'll bet. Snake's a name and snake's a game. Man, it's not the way you think it is. You've been getting in my hair ever since you got to town. I know it looks bad, but... Uh... It looks that way to me. Tom, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. You got no cause to go around flirting with every guy you see. I think the first time. Honey, I said I was sorry. Forgive me? Huh? Come on. The night of the robbery, Cully left here with them two city fellas. But when he came home, he's by himself. And he's in a big hurry. He gave me a suitcase to keep for him, and he asked me not to tell nobody about it. Did you? Heck no. A vow's a vow, and a man's got to take care of his kin. Anyhow, Cully got caught later that night by the police for shooting one of their own. But he didn't do it. How do you know that? This was his bed. He slept right here, and he kept his gun right there under that mattress. And it's still there. What do you uh, figure he kept in that old suitcase? Probably just some old clothes. Cully wasn't doing too good at that time. Do you think uh, any of them would fit me? All I got these I got on my back. Help yourself. It's over in the closet. Oh, it'll keep to tomorrow. I think I'll have a cigarette and turn in. That's a pretty good idea. God, you look tired myself. As soon as that bust out of here, I'm gonna grab that loot I got stashed. Now you stay here and do your time, then meet me in Mexico. Then they really live it up. You do credit to my son's clothes. You're welcome around here. Welcome to the 50th Annual Tobacco Festival. Yes, sir. 50 years ago, our fathers started all of this, and nothing has been added since, except the allotment. <laughs> <laughs> now, to get things moving, we have here Jim Hyatt and the Haywood Mountaineers. 
and our old friend fiddling Arthur Smith and the Skylarks. Let her go, Arthur. Something to drink, Rita? How about you, Nadine? Mm-hmm. I'd like some of that fancy Dan over there. Which one you looking at? The one with the sad eyes? Uh-uh. The other one. That outfit she's wearing turns me on. Don't believe I'd mess with this kind. He's a little more than you can handle. Oh, I could handle him all right. If I just had the chance. Besides, his gray hair fascinates me. Just thought I'd warn you. He's too old for you, Nadine. Honey, when you see snow on the mountaintop, there's always fire in the furnace. I'll get that drink. I would have gotten that for you. I may have other ideas. Don't say I didn't warn you. Can I buy you a drink? You come from the city, don't you? Yeah. Why, there's a show. What city? All of them. Oh, gosh, just think. Traveling from city to city and going any place you like, not being tied down. What I wouldn't give for a life like that. For instance? For instance what? Skip it. Say... How would you like to travel from city to city? Have all the clothes you wanted? Oh, I'd just love that. I thought you would. By the way, who was the young man that came over to buy the drink for the other young lady? Oh, you mean the fellow with my sister? Uh-huh. His name is Snake Richards. Snake Richards? Why, do you know him? No, but I probably will. By the way, don't you think it would be a good idea if we stepped over some other place where it might be less noisy. All right. After you. Thank you, friends. Thank you very much. And now a couple of fine neighbors, Jim and Mildred Mulkey.
your pa told me some things that made me think. And maybe what I feel for you is love. Hell, I wouldn't know. Mm. What did you put in this drink? A little something to spice it up. <laughs> kind of makes me feel funny inside. It does? Mm-hmm. Maybe when I look at you, <laughs> I don't feel a bit funny. You don't? Uh-huh. Yeah. You better get back to your buddy before I start taking you apart. He only bought me a drink. Some drink. Oh, but Tom. I don't do with you. <laughs> <laughs> Broad. Had to chill it. Temporarily. Hiya, Snake. Him? Snake? None other. Man, you bugging me? Could be. Got something on your mind? Yeah. A hundred thousand bucks. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't put me on, country boy. You were with color. You gotta know where the money is. Were you going someplace the other night, Snake? You must have been. A suitcase was all packed. Say, what happened to you and the sad-eyed girl? Did she cool you? What are you bothering in the man's love life for? That's his business. I'm not bothering him. I just wanted to find out where he stood. I understand the girl put him down. And if that's the case, well, I think I'll just move in. I wouldn't bother that girl if I was you. Why? You gonna stop me? I might just be forced to. What you gonna do, country boy? Pigeon.
right, folks. All right. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me say something. Now, don't worry too much about the little fracas. You know we have one every year. <laughs> and here's Arthur Smith with the fastest fiddle in the country. Arthur? <laughs> You belong to me. See if you can help Tim find his new britches. I want that boy in church today with his shoes shined, every button buttoned, and every hair on his head combed. I'll do it in just a minute, Pa. Pa, do I have to wear a tie? You do have to wear a tie. Oh, Tim, can you help me with this? Finished, Rita? She's making him awful pretty, Pa. Well, in that case, I think we better have that awfully pretty young fella go build a fire under Cephas before he misses the meeting. Yeah, we're gonna have to hurry if we make it. He's probably over there wrestling with his necktie. Yeah, I suspect he's losing, too. <laughs> you know, Snake, I think you better run over to his house and fetch him because I'm about to put this show on the road just about five minutes from now. Anything that ain't here stands a good chance of getting left. See you later, Snake. <laughs> All right, fat boy. Let's make it easy. Tell us where Cully hid that money. No, it no more. I told you all I know. Where's that con buddy of yours, Snake Richards? Get ready for church. Look, fat boy, don't put me on. Tell us where Cully hid that dough. No more. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. All right, once again, country boy, what was Snake Richards carrying in that suitcase the other night? Oh, Jim. Oh, just some of Cully's old clothes. And where is it now? I told you that, too. It's over in his closet. Listen, fat boy. If you don't tell us what we want to know, and I count to three, Blinky's gonna cut you up in tiny sirloins. You hear? One, two, three. Now, who are you gonna carve up? Real big-time operators. Takes three of you to handle one of him? All right, hold it where you are. All right, hardhead. You ready to play? What's the name of the game? Tic-tac-toe. Where'd you stash the dough? And it's got to be a partner deal. Yeah, and you're the junior partner. Junior gets it after he hands over the dough. Could be, but who knows? We may learn to like you by then. Blink, ready? 
Okay, let's head for the car. Okay, where's the dough? Right in there. Move. Keep moving. Right, where is it? There it is. Get it. How do I know that's it? Open. does make a difference. Hold it where you are.
Snake! How are you? I must have got careless. You're lucky they just creased you. Snake! Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He had to come home, Preach. He just had to come home. I told, I told you, Brother Bolton, when I cash in my chips, I'll have money all around me. Never hesitate to entertain a stranger. For many having done so have entertained an angel unaware. Why? 